Welcome to Mikon's hardware. You probably have already seen a few different Machinist X99K9 reviews online. Unfortunately, all of those reviews did not test the motherboard properly, and everything I have heard from them is how good the motherboard looks like and why you shall buy it. Maybe they have got some kind of a different motherboard, or maybe it's just me so unlucky, but I have bought myself two Machinist X99K9, and I have also talked to a few of my subscribers, and they have got exactly the same issues as I have got with my Machinist X99K9 motherboards. But let's start with the motherboard specification first. The motherboard is very similar to Machinist X99Z version 102 or 104. The major difference between these two motherboards is that the X99K9 has got an extra M.2 slot to install Wi-Fi and Bluetooth cards. It's located over here, which is right under the NVMe M.2 slot. Thus, you first install a Wi-Fi or Bluetooth M.2 card and on top you install M.2 NVMe SSD. The rest of the configuration is very much the same as Machinist X99Z. You still have four memory slots, four memory channels, you have a bunch of SATA 3 ports, if to be more precise it's six SATA 3 ports, USB 3, USB 2 ports, a few fan connectors. The power delivery system or VRM consists of uh, f just four phases, three phases for CPU, one phase for the memory. The detailed technical specification will be available on my slides by the end of the video. Now let's talk about the issues with the Machinist X99K9. First of all, the motherboard does not properly work with the smart fan. Yes, it's very unfortunate and I don't know how Chinese managed to screw up this function. On Machinist X99Z it works properly, on Machinist X99K9 it does not work. You will find the smart fan settings in the BIOS, you can adjust it, you can save it, but the fan is simply not increasing and not decreasing its speed according to the CPU temperature. I have tested BIOS from iEngineer for Machinist X99Z, yes, it's compatible with this motherboard. I have also tested the stock BIOS, and both of the BIOSes have the same issue, thus it's a defect of the motherboard. The second major issue is the USB 3.0 port. Unfortunately, on this motherboard, Chinese did not connect the ports correctly to the chipset, and the ports are malfunctioning. If I try to connect my external USB 3.0 SSD drive to run a crystal disk mark test or just copy large files from SSD or to SSD, the system misbehaves, sometimes it hangs and a few times I even got a few crashes. This is very sad and very annoying, but it is what it is. Because Chinese decided to connect the chipset in a wrong way, the PCI Express X1 slot is also not functioning well. Well, if I install my NVIDIA GT710 graphics card, it's kinda detected and it kinda works. By the way, this is how it looks like. It's a small graphics card with just PCI Express X1 connector over here. So, if I install this graphics card onto Machinist X99K9 into the X16 slot over here, it works no problem, everything is fine. But if I install it into the X1 slot, this one, uh, the video card is detected, the video output from the BIOS is available, once I load into Windows it's also working, but if I try to install NVIDIA drivers, my screen goes completely black and the computer does not display any output. I have also tried to install two graphics cards, both of them were NVIDIA GT710, PCI Express X1 and PCI Express X16, GPU Z detects both of the graphics cards, but NVIDIA drivers are refusing to work with the one which is installed in PCI Express X1 slot. For those who are doubting if it's my graphics card problem or NVIDIA driver problem, I have tested this PCI Express X1 graphics card into my Huanangi X99 TF motherboard and it works flawlessly. So this is the problem with this motherboard. I have reported these major problems to the AliExpress seller called Machinist Official Store. They have confirmed my findings and they have promised me that maybe in the future they will get an updated BIOS and that BIOS will solve the issues. But as always, when Chinese promise something, believe it only when you actually get the result. Less important issues about Machinist X99K9 is that sleep mode is working only halfway. It means that if you have your system installed in UEFI mode, the sleep mode works, but if you have your system installed in legacy mode, the sleep mode does not work. The system goes to sleep and never wakes up from there and you have to perform a hard reset. Regarding the UEFI mode, if you try to use a modified BIOS for Turbo Boost Unlock or if you flush 
BIOS from iEngineer onto Machinist X99K9, most likely the UEFI settings will be gone and you will have to restore the UEFI partition with the Windows installer or completely reinstall Windows. Otherwise, you will constantly get an ear that the system does not find a booting drive. It's really extremely annoying, but it is what it is. By the way, all the tests I have done with the BIOS from iEngineer, which is available on GitHub and in the Mi 899 application, as well with the stock BIOS, as well with the overclockers.ru BIOS, which is the stock BIOS but with unlocked RAM timings. Thus, you are free to pick whichever BIOS you want, but if you do not have an external USB flash programmer, I would strongly recommend you to stick with the stock BIOS or the BIOS from overclockers.ru, which is the stock BIOS with unlocked RAM timings. A few times I have got a situation when my Machinist X99K9 got bricked after flashing BIOS from iEngineer using Win. I was not able to identify exactly why it happened to be like that, but I'm just telling you that if you do not have external USB flash programmer to restore your motherboard in case if it breaks, do not use Machinist X99Z BIOS from iEngineer. Use the K9 BIOS from overclockers.ru if you want to have the RAM timings adjustments in your motherboard. Regarding overclocking, I have tested Machinist X99K9 with my i7-5820K and you can overclock this CPU on this motherboard, but only if you use BIOS from iEngineer. The stock BIOS does not have overclocking features, or more precisely, there are some settings, but they are just not working. Thus, if you have i7 or a Xeon E5 1650v3, 1660v3 and you want to overclock the CPUs, Use the BIOS from iEngineer, but as I said before, I strongly recommend you to buy an external USB flash programmer just in case. Unlike many other Chinese X99 motherboards, Machinist X99K9 has actually routed PCI Express lines correctly, and if you install a CPU with a limited number of PCI Express lanes, such as i7-5820K, which has just 28 PCI Express lanes compared to 40 PCI Express lanes on the Xeon CPUs, the motherboard is still fully functional. The PCI Express X16 slot works as X16, and the M.2 slot for PCI Express SSDs is still working as PCI Express 3.0 X4. This is a very big plus, but if you would like to overclock a CPU on this motherboard with such a weak VRM, I'm not so sure. The maximum memory speed with my i7-5820K was, as on any other Chinese X99 motherboard, DDR4-2400. Apart of i7-5820K, I have of course tested Xeon E5-2678v3, as this is arguably one of the most popular CPUs on this platform. The only issue I was able to identify is that for some reason, stock BIOS from uh, iEngineer for Machinist X99Z does not work with E5-2678v3. If I use the same BIOS and apply Turbo Boost Unlock procedure, it works with E5-2678v3. Other than that, I didn't get any issues, maximum memory speed DDR4-2133, I have tested up to 128 gigs of RAM, and I have tested three modes of the CPU. First is the stock variant, second is the legacy or the standard Turbo Boost Unlock procedure when we were injecting FFS driver into the DXE region, and the last one is the next method of Turbo Boost Unlocking using F3 Turbo Tool. This method is described on a Russian website, and I will link the tutorial in the video description, but in general this is a better way, because it's not only preserving the sleep mode function, means if you have installed your system in UEFI mode and applied this Turbo Boost Unlock procedure, you can send your PC to sleep and after PC wakes up, you're still getting your Turbo Boost Unlocked behavior of your CPU. A part of this, this new method using S3 Turbo Tool also improves the CPU power consumption. I have used my external wattmeter to perform the electricity consumption measurements and here are the numbers. Stock configuration consumes 50 watt at idle and 185 watt under ADA64 stress test. The previous old Turbo Boost Unlock method with the FFS drivers injected into the DXE region consumes around 76 watt at idle, which is significantly more than 50 watt with the stock configuration, and about 207 watt when loaded with ADA64 stress test. 
With this new S3 Turbo Tool method, we are getting only 56 watt at idle, which is just a tiny bit more than 50 watt of the stock configuration at idle, and around 200 watt, which is just a bit more than 185 watt of the stock configuration under 8064 stress test. But because the CPU works at increased clock frequency, it also delivers better performance. Thus, I think this extra 15 watt of electricity consumption is actually justified here. For the curious ones, I would like to inform that I have also tested E52620 V3 and E52620 V4. That's why I can safely assume that Machinist X99K9 is working properly fine with the Xeon E5 V4 CPUs. Unlike Tinsha X99E8i, Machinist X99K9 has a fully functional M.2 slot for Wi-Fi expansion cards. I have tested the slot with my Intel Wi-Fi card, which has both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth module. Both of these are working properly fine, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. The power delivery system or VRM is rather poor on Machinist X99K9. Using ADA64 stress test with the Xeon E52678 V3, I have got almost 80 degrees Celsius in 30 minutes. This means that the actual temperature of the power delivery components or MOSFETs under the radiator would be around 100 degrees Celsius. I have also measured the temperatures on the back side of the PCB and the temperatures were 75 degrees Celsius. The PCB itself is rather thick, thus 75 degrees Celsius is quite a bad result. As I said, it means that the actual MOSFET's temperature would be around 100 degrees Celsius. All in all, it's not recommended to use CPUs such as the Xeon E52678 V3 on Machinist X99K9 if you plan to use this CPU for heavy calculations, if you play games only and do not load your CPU up to 100% all the time, it shall be just fine. Before I go into conclusion for Machinist X99K9 motherboard, I'd like to tell you that both of my motherboards I will be giving away during a livestream or some other event for the 10k subscribers. When this is gonna happen, I'm not sure, but hopefully soon. Thus, if you would like to get one of these motherboards with a CPU and a few memory sticks for free, you have to stay tuned and follow my channel and I will inform you about what you have to do to participate in this giveaway. Maybe you will get it, maybe not, who knows. And my final conclusion for Machinist X99K9 would be as following. This is a very nice motherboard, but unfortunately Chinese managed to screw up SmartFun, USB 3.0 and PCI Express X1. That's why my score for the motherboard would be 6 out of 10, and only because Chinese are stopping to produce X99 C612 motherboards, all of the newest motherboards that they are putting on AliExpress are using the cheap B85, Z87 or any other like H81 chipsets, which are not really true X99 motherboards. These motherboards have their own issues and some of them have quite significant issues. But for now, we have remainings of Machinist X99Z and Machinist X99K9 motherboards, which are the only options for those who want to have an M80X motherboard with a true X99 or C612 chipset. Obviously, Machinist X99K9 is not as good as Machinist X99Z, but at least it looks differently. I'm also planning to review Huanan X99 8MF in the near future, but for now though, it's all I have for you. Thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope you have enjoyed it, goodbye.